Hello everyone, in this video we will talk about vitamin B12. So in our previous video we spoken about B9 and how B9 and B12 work together. Right, one vitamin deficiency leads to other. So here if B12 is deficient, obviously the person will deficient about B9. Though you are consuming B9, you are have plenty levels of B9, most of the B9 is not available. So if the person eventually landed up with B9 deficiency. So we'll talk about B12. So B12 is the only B complex vitamin which will be stored in the liver. Okay, and it's a uh, erythropoietic vitamin. It's a useful for synthesis of RBC cells, like especially in hemoglobin synthesis, right? And the structure to talk about structure, uh, it is made up of uh, tetrapyrrole ring system, as like heme. Okay, if you come across the heme structure, there is a tetrapyrrole ring, pyrrole ring, and there is a iron atom in heme. But here, the centrally located atom is cobalt, so that's why it is known as cobalamine. Okay, cobalamine. You can make out see here the centrally located atom is cobalt okay and it has got uh, tetrapyrrole ring one two three four all these tetrapyrrole rings are joined by methylene bridges and there is attachment of some uh, para amino benzene rings which gives stability to this uh, b12 and coming to the sources so the vegans like vegetarian people mostly suffered with this uh, vitamin deficiency because the rich sources all are non vegetable sources vitamin b12 mainly present in kidney liver brain meat fish eggs so there is no vegetable source available for this vitamin so vegans that means vegetarian people definitely going to be suffer with this vitamin b12 deficiency so far that they are supposed to consume non vegetarian foods so the requirement so you are supposed to take 3 to 4 micrograms of vitamin B12 per day and in case of pregnancy and lactation the amount will be increased. The requirement will be increased. So absorption and transport though it is a water soluble vitamin its absorption and transport is bit complicated and it needs some additive factors for its absorption in the intestine okay and also for transportation. So when it reaches to the stomach, there it uh, combines with the intrinsic factor. There is a factor called intrinsic factor in the stomach to form vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex. And this intrinsic factor will transport B12 from stomach to intestine. If intrinsic factor is not there, B12 cannot be transported and it will simply waste off as such and will excrete in the stool. So vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex is absorbed in the ileum. Without this intrinsic factor, it cannot be absorbed. Remember this. And if the uh, in the ileal cells, the intrinsic factor is released and B12 will also separate it. And in B B12 in the plasma, transported with the help of a protein called transcobalamine 2. So there also there is no free movement of uh, B12. It there also it has to take help of some protein that is known as transcobalamin, which carries B12 from circulation, total circulation to liver. So here in the picture you can see here B12 when you take the diet it will reach us to the stomach there it will mix up with intrinsic factor yellow color thing you can make out here it's a glycoprotein and they make a complex called IF B12 IF complex and when it reaches to the lumen of the gut mucous cells of ileum so intrinsic factor will be released and B12 will be enter inside the mucous cells and when it reaches to the blood there there is a protein called transcobalamine 2 which binds the b12 and takes it to the liver so storage unlike other white soluble vitamins vitamin b12 is stored in the liver and other tissue so this is the uniqueness of b12 okay whole liver contains 2 milligrams of b12 which is sufficient for 2 to 3 years so that means liver is a rich source of b12 so active forms like other water soluble vitamins b12 also has got two active forms that is methylcobalamine other one is deoxyadenosyl cobalamine. So this methyl group and deoxyadenosyl groups are attached to the valency of the cobalt. Cobalt is having six valencies. So one of the valency has to be attached with methyl group or deoxyadenosyl cobalamine. You can see here in the picture. So here cobalt is there in the valency. So here it may be cyanide. If a cyanide group is attached, it is known as cyanocobalamine. If methyl group attached, that is methylcobalamine. If deoxyadenosyl group attached, it is known as 5' deoxyadenosyl cobalamine. 
so it's all about the depending on the substance which is attached to the cobalt in the valence linkage and b12 functions to talk about the b12 functions so as i mentioned already methyl cobalamin is a coenzyme of methionine synthase so this way methionine is produced in our body i mean like and deoxyadenosyl cobalamin is a coenzyme of methyl melanyl coa mutase in gluconeogenesis you require vitamin b12 okay if this vitamin is not there this methyl melanyl coa cannot be converted into propionyl coa and propionyl coa cannot be converted and involved in gluconeogenesis and therapeutic functions vitamin b12 is effective in lowering concentration of plasma homocysteine that's what i was telling from homocysteine you require uh, like if you add methyl group to homocysteine homocysteine converted to methionine and the donor of this methyl group is methyl cobalamin if methyl cobalamin is not there homocysteine cannot be converted to methionine and there is increase of homocysteine levels and in circulation high levels of homocysteine attracts the uh, free radicals and some other stuff and they undergo oxidation they form or they make foam cells and they obstruct the circulation okay causes blockages in the arteries and causes cardiovascular diseases you see here in the reaction a homocysteine there is a donor like methyl cobalamin donates methyl group to homocysteine form methionine same way the methyl melanyl coa to succinyl coa in uh, gluconeogenesis okay how you are getting from long chain um, what to say uh, from odd chain fatty acids okay from odd chain fatty acids how you are getting uh, glucose so that condition you require this uh, adenosyl cobalamin conversion of methyl melanyl coa to succinyl coa so folate trap in our previous video in the in the case of b9 we have discussed this again as a because b12 also involved in folate trap we have to discuss here so in conversion of homocysteine to methionine there you required methyl cobalamin after donating its methyl group to homocysteine homocysteine converted to methionine and methionine has lot of functions okay as a, acting as a like a donor of uh, uh, methyl, methyl group by converting into SAM acidinosyl methionine and after donating methyl group the plain B12 has to be regenerated I mean converted back to methyl cobalamin here the donor for this is the N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate N5 tetrahydro N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate donates methyl group to B12 in regeneration of methyl cobalamin and converted to tetrahydrofolate and this tetrahydrofolate has got other functions so what happens in folate trap this b12 is not available as a deficiency is there so methyl uh, tetrahydrofolate cannot be active like it cannot donate its methyl group to methyl cobalamin i mean cobalamin so most of the folate trapped as methyl tetrahydrofolate so this is known as folate trap so deficiency there are a lot of reasons nutritional deficiency that means you are not taking ample or adequate amounts of b12 there might be decrease in absorption if in case of malabsorption syndrome like suppose as intrinsic factor is supposed to be synthesized in the stomach if there is no intrinsic factor b12 cannot be form a complex and in alone b12 cannot be absorbed by the ileum so it will simply excreted in the stool so intrinsic factor deficiency gastric atrophy and pregnancy so there will be more demand in case of pregnancy and fish tail form which is also will not allow b12 to be absorbed in the intestine so deficiency there are a lot of disorders like hematopoietic and others hematopoietic to talk about megaloblastic anemia pernicious anemia these are the two clinical conditions assisted with vitamin b12 deficiency and neurological numbness and tingling of the hands and feet subacute combined degeneration of the neurons subacute combined degeneration of the neurons others like hyper homocysteinemia like uh, homocysteine stones in uh, circulation and in uh, kidney and uh, eclohydria that means hcl there is no production of hcl in the stomach so assessment of b12 deficiency you can check the serum b12 levels and uh, shilling test and peripheral smear and homocysteinuria so if uh, in case what happens if b12 is not there more homocysteines uh, are there in the circulation they simply excrete in the urine so by identifying more homocysteine in the urine you can make out the person is def uh, deficient of or the person is suffering with vitamin b12 deficiency right how should vitamin b12 be administered to the patient with pernicious anemia okay so there is like cobalamin injections available okay so in that conditions if the any person who are like 
suffering with pernicious anemia their commercially b12 injections are available so they can take up and they can come over the deficiency of b12 okay so to finally to say b12 deficiency leads to deficiency of b9 okay b9 is there but because of the deficiency of b12 b9 is also not available so leading to two vitamin deficiencies okay that is the take home message so that's all about b12 thanks for listening thank you